Welcome back to Daybreak. Opening ceremonies of Silicon Little League tomorrow. And uh, League President Steve Patterson joins us. And Steve, good morning to you, sir. Thanks for being here today. Good morning, Jimmy Dale. It's good uh, to be here. Uh, it's, it, it's, uh, what's that saying? Too blessed to be stressed? Man, on a Saturday, if you want to be stressed, uh, you've got all these kids, but what a great opportunity it is. It's a wonderful opportunity, and we're glad to be opening up tomorrow and excited about playing baseball in Silicaga. And, and I mentioned to you earlier, it's our 59th year in Silicaga, so a lot of tradition, a lot of history, so ready to go. Did you play in Silicaga? I did. Played, did you? Played baseball in Silicaga, and my coach was Stevie Wyatt. Oh, wow. And, and every time I see him at the bank, I still call him coach. <laughs> So that's been a long time ago, but he's still my coach. Yeah, uh, tomorrow's going to be a busy day, full slate of games tomorrow too, but opening ceremonies. But before we get to all that, talk about the Sylacauga Little League a bit. Well, Sylacauga Little League, like I said, been in town for 59 years, and it's a community-based organization, and it's all run by volunteers, and, and of course the city does let us uh, you know, reside on their property, and they help us with the utilities, and so they've been very generous to us in the past and still continue to be. But it's primarily a community-based organization that runs by volunteers, and everything over there was built by volunteers, and hard sweat and hard work, and a lot of people. You know, it's humbling to be present because you have so many people that walk up and offer to help you that's been doing it for so long, and uh, they continue to come back and continue to help you time after time after time. And now, this is your first year as president, but you're involved in Little League forever. I've been involved in Little League on the board, coaching, managing for close to 25 years. It's my 24th year, and uh, so I've been doing it for quite a while. You get tossed out of a game coaching. No, not yet. I've, I've come awfully close, but not yet. <laughs> uh, uh, the Sylacauga Little League encompasses uh, uh, several different divisions. Talk about that this morning. Well, we start, believe it or not, at age four, four, five, I and six years. I believe that when you said that I know. yesterday. They get younger and younger, but <laughs> technically four-year-olds can play. And, uh, and then it goes up to... You know, in our challenger division, all the way up to 18 year olds. So we have our four, fives, and six, then we have a minor league, and then you have your major league, which is traditionally 10, 11, and 12 year olds. And, um, and then you have your challenger league, which is the special needs children, and that's anywhere from four to 18 years old. So it's, and our challenger year has experienced the most growth, and I think we'll have the biggest league we've ever had in challenger this year. Now, that challenger league actually kicks off a week from tomorrow, is that correct? They kick off next weekend, and, and Allison Gardino and Chris Gardino and several people there have been doing that for years. And they've done a wonderful job with it and continue to grow that program. And there's a strong need in the community and not just in Sylacauga, but people come from, you know, Talladega and Millerville and Lincoln and Lake mm -hmm. City to play. And, and there's a strong need for Challenger and people come from all over to play. What's so special, Steve, about Little League Baseball? I'd, to me, like I said, the family atmosphere at the field, uh, the kids playing and having a good time. The parents being involved in the community, and and one and I mentioned earlier, I'm letting Tommy Culver, or I asked Tommy to throw out the first pitch, but you know Tommy and Gina have been involved in baseball yeah. for the last, you know, probably ten years and been on the board, and Tommy's been president I think for eight years, mm -hmm. and Gina's been on the board for eight years or longer, and uh, but you start looking at some of the people that's been involved in little league, you know, like Rusty Mayfield's a coach this year, and I think he's been doing it for probably close to twenty years. Um, you know, and before that, his brother Keith had done it for mm -hmm. close to 20 years. Randy Gill, his grandson's coming through, and he's been doing it for over 20 years. So you've got people that's got tenure 20 and 30 years. And, you know, of course, the, the standard bear was Coach Wingert, who did it for close to 35 mm -hmm. years. So you've got people that stay in Little League in the organization. They're not just in it for two or three years, but they're in it for a long time. And, uh, and I think that's one of the things that makes it special. The smell of hot dogs and hamburgers cooking and it's just uh, uh, fun at the Little League Park and all the games are played at that comp in that complex there. They are. We'll play at Buddy Peters Field, which is where we've always played. And the little boys will play in the outfield on the little t-ball field. And, and, uh, and then the girls are up on the hill. Softball is, is up on the hill at Roberts Field. So we're glad to have them there. And so we'll be playing there all day tomorrow. Opening ceremonies, uh, what, starts about 9 o'clock? It starts something? at 9 a.m. We'll have first pitch thrown out, and then we'll play some baseball and play some softball. I wonder if Culver's been working on his first pitch. I hope he don't throw it in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of kids uh, are involved. I don't know the exact numbers, nor the number of teams. Can you shed any light on that? Well, we have eight teams in Little League Baseball this year, and I think they have 12 in softball. And then in Challenger, we have two teams, but there's an extremely large amount of kids. I think, you know, Allison was saying up close to between between 35 and 50 kids in Challenger this mm -hmm. year. 
And uh, so, you know, some of the kids come and play, and some of them, you know, roll in and out based on what they're able to do. But, uh, but a huge amount of challenger kids this year. And there's a huge amount of work done outside of actually playing baseball there. Well, we've been working probably for two months now. Uh, by the time you order uniforms and work on the fields and and do fundraising, there's there's a lot that goes into it. And it's really a year round year round endeavor, and it just doesn't wake up one day and play ball. And there's a lot of hard working individuals and volunteers that spend a lot of time over there, and uh, and I won't try to name them all because it's just too many. But they spend a lot of time put in, and then once you get to tomorrow, then the fun part starts. Mm. But all the work has been put in prior to now. Well, it promises to be a beautiful day tomorrow. Uh, get the rain out of here today, and a, a, a lot of uh, leg work getting the fields ready tomorrow, and and uh, that kind of thing. But uh, you got to love it. I mean, it, it, it's it's something that you don't get paid for. You, no. you just got to love what you're doing. You absolutely do. And you go over there, and you you work hard, and you work hard, and sometimes you wonder why, and then you show up in the morning, and it's fresh, and it's you know the. It's just a beautiful day in the morning when you get there at opening day and all the kids are running around in their uniforms and they're so excited to play their first game and they're a little bit of nervousness and and uh, and it's fun. It's something, Steve, uh, to be said about seeing all those kids in all those different colored uniforms, just beautiful colors and, and knowing that one of those kids one day Maybe at another level far from where we began at Buddy Peters Field. You, you don't see it often, but you do see it just occasionally. And an example is Dude Wheeler. Mm -hmm. You know, Dude Wheeler came through Silicaga Little League, and he wound up playing for the Yankees last year, and he's still playing in Japan now. So he's having a wonderful career. But, you know, it's rare for that to happen. But you still see a lot of kids that play college ball and play high school ball, and, and it's just the beginning of their careers. And if they don't play, there's nothing wrong with that. You come out and have fun. and learn a little bit about baseball and learn a lot about life. Uh, I have a grandson that's in his second year T-ball and it amazes me, uh, these volunteer coaches, uh, the patience that they have and, and, and just over and over and over again. And you never know uh, a, a kid of that age you know, what they're thinking and what they're going to do next. But those coaches, they just love them and continue to teach. They do. And then that's, you know, it's one of the most challenging ages is T-ball to coach because, you know, a lot of times they don't even have to stand in line and they're worried about everything but baseball. And, and that's fine. They're out there just to have fun. But the flip side of it is when I coached T-ball a long time ago, just about every game, a little kid will run up and hug you around the knees and tell you he loves you. <laughs> and so you get that just uninhibited, raw love and emotion, and, and that makes it a little different, too, and that makes it fun. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, opening ceremonies at uh, Buddy Peters Field. And, uh, you know, Richard Wingard, you, you mentioned him early on. Uh, Richard Wingard left his handprint on Little League Baseball. Without a doubt. He is... He loved Little League Baseball, you know, and he coached everything. He coached football, and, and you know, if you know Coach Wingard, he coached basketball and, and did a lot of things. But, uh, but he loved Little League, and he coached, for, I think, for 33 years, if I remember right. And, uh, but his passion, his excitement. I know one time we asked him to throw up and pitch, and he set the standard for that, by the way, because after he threw the first pitch, he ran around the bases and slid into home. <laughs> so I'll be curious to see if Tommy was does that in the morning. <laughs> oh, he was safe. <laughs> but I'll be curious to see if Tommy tries to pull something off like that. But, but his excitement, and it carried over to his kids. And, uh, and, you know, when I first came into coaching, he had been there for a while. And, of course, you wanted to try your best to beat Coach Wingard, but that was easier said than done. Mm. And, uh, but he set the bar up there and was a tremendous coach and a tremendous motivator and, uh, and a hard worker. He, you know, even toward the end when he was up in his yeah. life, was building Roberts Field. And he still came out there to help lay blocks and put the roof on. And he was, you know, I'm not sure how old, but he was on up in age when he was out there laying block. So it, it never stopped. It never, he was always tireless and a hard worker and loved Little League Baseball. Steve Patterson, president of Silicon Little League, his first year as president, but he's involved in Little League for a long, long time. And uh, there'll be a huge crowd there tomorrow morning for opening ceremonies, too. There will be. There'll be a lot of parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles to see their babies play baseball. No doubt about it. I'll get started 9 o'clock uh, uh, tomorrow with the opening ceremonies and shortly thereafter the first pitch. Uh, how many games we got on the slate tomorrow? Three or four? Going to play three games on our field and then I know up on softball I think they've got five games tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll be playing all day long yeah. tomorrow. Uh, and it it takes funds to operate uh, a, a league of, of this uh, capacity and uh, the largeness of it. And there's always fundraisers. There's always fundraisers, and people don't understand that it it costs a good bit of money to run a league, and. Um, and I, like I said, we've had general support from corporate sponsors, but we also do fundraising. And so, uh, to anyone out there, if you'd like to, you know, be a sponsor, we'd love to have you. But, um, but we have a lot of people that's contributed for a long time. That's been a rock for us, and has always stepped up and helped us. And and you know, I can just not only with funds, but also help. Mm -hmm. You know, like the other day, we had a leak on a two-inch water line, and and you know, Diversified Plumbing came out and helped us with that plumbing issue. And, uh, you know, Randy Gill came out with his tractor to dig it up mm -hmm. on his own time, spent three or four hours digging. So we're constantly having people come out and help us, whether they give money or whether they give their time. Mm -hmm. And they're so generous. And like I said, it's humbling the people that come out and help you. And this Silicaga Little League program and organization uh, is uh, uh, open for people to, to look at. You know, we're not hiding anything. Uh, we've got a tremendous board that all volunteers and, you know, uh, skepticism, I guess, is one of the things that, that's followed all of us down through the years as times change. But uh, the Silicaga Little League is uh, transparent in what they do. Absolutely. I mean, you try to, you know, you're a steward of the money. The people give you the money and the people fundraise and they're generous with their money. and the, you want to safeguard that money, so you set up a system of checks and balances, make sure that happens. But at the same time, we have open board meetings. Anybody's welcome to come anytime. Anybody's welcome to open our checkbook and look at our checkbook anytime. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we welcome that. And it's, because it's not my money, it's our money. It's the community's money. It's little league's money. It's those children's money. And uh, and so it's just it's my responsibility to help safeguard that money. But anybody can come look anytime, and I welcome anybody to. And by the way. Long years ago, why was I not drafted? <laughs> I was good, man. <laughs> but, you know, uh, the draft is involved. It, it, it has a lot to do with, uh, uh, you know, Major League Baseball, but on a, on a smaller scale. It does. And, and you, know, you know, in a world today where a lot of times it's, there's a world of, seems like a world of entitlement and people always get a trophy, mm -hmm. but still in Little League, you know, you get drafted based on your ability, based on your ability to play and the hard work that you've put in. And, uh, and that's some of the lessons I think that a lot of people need, a lot of children need. And, but Steve, uh, everybody wants to play, don't they? You and, know? Ev and everybody does get to Good. play. They absolutely do. Yeah. Steve Patterson, president of Silicaga Little League, and it's going to be a grand day tomorrow. Opening ceremonies, uh, uh, first pitch, and then a full slate of Little League baseball. And uh, if uh, is there a website people can go to to get the schedules and stuff? Uh, we're on Facebook, of course, okay. like everybody, but just Little League baseball, Silicaga Little League baseball, yeah. and uh, we'll have them posted there or come by the field. We have them posted on bulletin boards, and or, you know. But come by and see us. Come by and see us tomorrow, and we'll and give you we'll give you a schedule. Have, have lunch with us tomorrow, and yeah, have a hot dog. Uh, there you go, and uh, all that tomorrow over at Buddy Peters Field and surrounding fields there at the complex uh, in Silicon. Steve, always a pleasure, and uh, look forward to being with you tomorrow, introducing all the players, and hopefully we talked about Steve and I talked about this uh, a couple of days ago. Hopefully we're going to be directing into uh, presenting a player of the week. And there's so many kids out there uh, that, that uh, uh, are involved in Silicon Little League, and all of them are MVPs in our eyes, aren't they? They absolutely are. All right. Steve Patterson, our guest this morning on Daybreak. Don't forget opening ceremonies tomorrow over at Buddy Peters Field about 9 o'clock. And Tommy Culver. Uh, work on that arm, man. Work on that arm. Get ready to throw out the first pitch. More on Daybreak after this.